we actually have um, the Director General of the Ministry of Health online who would like to give some, um, uh, uh, some additional opening remarks. We're very lucky that he was able to make it today. Um, so we're just going to um, share his screen and hand over for a couple of um, remarks from, Ms., uh, from Dr. Amoff. Thank you so much. Thank you, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> My name is Philip Ngere. I work with the Minister of Health, uh, the Division of Disease Surveillance and Response. Uh, I manage the Public Health uh, Emergency Operation Center and I also coordinate event-based surveillance. I'm here to deliver the opening remarks for the uh, Dr. Amok, our Director General, who is uh, away on official duties in Zanzibar and was not able to uh, to make it for this conference uh, physically or virtually at the moment. So if you allow, then I could go ahead and deliver his remarks. The organizers of the Kenya One Health Conference, uh, fellow panelists, conference participants, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, uh, good afternoon for those of us uh, who are reading in the afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to this panel discussion on One Health policy implementation focusing on the human health perspective. The One Health approach recognizes the close, close connection between the health of humans, animals, and the environment. For example, we know that more than 75% of emerging and emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic in origin. The recurrent uh, Rift Valley fever outbreaks and the recent findings of the, of the Middle East uh, re respiratory syndrome, MASCOV, in humans are good local examples of these threats. Besides emerging and re-emerging infections, other important drivers of One Health approach include the threat of antimicrobial resistance and food safety issues. When streaming One Health Mainstreaming the One Health approach requires a conducive policy environment. Mm -hmm. While Kenya has no One Health policy, the One Health approach is often incorporated in sector policies and plans. In, 20, 2000, in the year 2020, with the support of the Food, uh, Agriculture Organiz Food and Agriculture Organization, the Zoonotic Disease Unit conducted a One Health policy analysis. The report is due for stakeholder validation. The analysis reviewed policies, including the Constitution of Kenya 2010, Kenya Health Policy 2014 to 2030, the National Policy on Prevention and Containment of Antimicrobial Resistance 2017, National Food Safety Policy 2013, and the Vision 2030 third medium term plan. Some of, some of the preliminary findings show that most policies in human health, veterinary health and wildlife sectors either have explicit or implied One Health interventions. However, the constitution of Kenya 2010, the vision 2030 and the environmental policies were found to lack any explicit or implied One Health linkages. The Kenya Health Policy 2014 2030 to 2030 has three One Health related objectives. One is to eliminate communicable conditions. Two is to minimize expo exposure to health risk factors. And lastly, to strengthen collaboration with the private and other health related sectors. While One Health is not explicitly mentioned, the policy recognizes the importance of collaboration between sectors to enable Kenyans attain the highest standards of health. On policies and strategies on zoonotic disease control, the government of Kenya established the Zoonotic Disease Unit in 2012 through a memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Public Health and sanitation, the Ministry of Livestock Development. 
A strategic plan 2012-2017 was launched in 2012 to guide activities of the Zoonotic Disease Unit. And the strategy has been reviewed and updated and updated and an updated plan developed to cover the year 2021 to 2025. The updated strategy has three objectives. To establish structures and partnerships to promote one health, to strengthen surveillance, prevention and control of zoonosis, and to conduct and promote applied research. On zoonotic disease control still, Several disease-specific plans have been developed in the last 10 years, and this include Rift Valley Fever Contingency Plan, developed in 2014, Rabies Elimination Strategy for 2014 to 2030, Brucellosis, Brucellosis Prevention and Control Strategy for the year 2021 to 2040, and Anthrax Prevention and Control Strategy for the year 2021-2036. Other strategies that have been developed for diseases like, like highly pathogenic uh, avian influenza, Ebola, Marburg, plague, amongst others. There are also policies and strategies that have been developed on antimicrobial resistance. Great strides have been made to this end in creating policy environment that fosters one health approach in tackling anti antimicrobial resistance. The national health policy on prevention and containment of antimicrobial resistance and the national action plan were developed in 2017. The AMR policy was the first policy to be developed while fully embracing One Health approach. Additional policy documents include the National Integrated Antimicrobial Stewardship Plan, as for the year 2021 to 2026, and the National Infection Prevention and Control Policy Strategic Plan for the year 2021 to 2026. Policies have also been uh, drafted uh, on, on, on food safety and security. The national food safety policy was developed in 2013 to establish and maintain a food safety system that harmonizes interagency efforts. Various laws support safety, uh, including the Food, Drugs and Substance Act, uh, that is CAP 254, the Public Health Act, that's CAP 242, and the Meat Control Act, which is CAP 316. In conclusion, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, Kenya has a conducive policy environment for mainstreaming One Health. However, developing a standalone One Health policy has benefits, as this will anchor One Health at the highest level. Alternatively, we can ensure most existing and all new policies and strategies in health, veterinary, and environment sectors incorporate One Health. Thank you.